kind of caught my attention there. They said this song was going to be about the sermon. I started taking notes so I knew where I was going to be. I appreciate that. Thanks for the help. Would you find a Bible somewhere near you? I know this is a Lutheran church, but believe it or not, we do we'll let you in the door if you bring your Bible with you. I know it's different, but uh, just a word to you. If, if you want to bring your Bible with you, you can do that. We will still let you in the church. If you didn't bring one with you, we usually have some in a few pockets somewhere near you in front of you. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, this day of Pentecost, the first day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Drop down to verse 12. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. God's grace, mercy, and peace be yours from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Soul season is upon us. We're ready to do some fishing. Today we celebrate Pentecost. And it's celebrated with all the Christians all around the world. It's not just those of us gathered at St. Mark today, right? It's Christians all around the world celebrating this day, Pentecost, the outpouring of what? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost is really an Old Testament festival that was celebrated 50 days after Passover. Right? Um, the Greek word pente means, any guesses? 50. 50. Yeah. 50 days after Passover then. And Pentecost began this harvest season. On Pentecost, the first fruits were offered to God as a thank offering. And it showed the confidence that, that there would be more to come. We'll give you, God, the first fruits, because we know that you're going to bless us with so much more. We're going to use this idea then of first fruits and a beginning to celebrate special things here at St. Mark Lutheran Church and Preschool. We've got some really neat things <coughs> celebrating, some first fruits that, that we're going to kick off again this day. When the Holy Spirit was poured out on us, we were reborn spiritually. We began our spiritual journey, our spiritual life at that point with God. The first fruit of our spiritual journey and that, that rebirth happened as God gave us the gift of faith, the gift of salvation. When we were justified. Anybody know what justified means? I, I'm hoping that five guys that stand up there, sit up there, they might know something about that. I'm not sure. Anybody else know what justified means? Well, I put it in, in my brain so I can understand it. 
That, that God has justified me is just as if I never sinned. I've got my, my family here, so I have to be careful how I say this, you know, because you guys might, might know something about me. But, you know, there was a time in my life that, that God could look at me and see my sin. There was a time without him that I was in sin. <coughs> and we confess we're poor, miserable sinners. You guys know that about me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Weak, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. I fooled some of the people, apparently. Yeah. There was a time in my life that I was a poor, miserable sinner. A terrible, rotten scoundrel, right? You guys know about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's better. That's it. Yeah, because you were right there next to me, yeah. If you want to know more about it, just talk to my twin brother, Ted. He knows it all. Yeah. But you know what? God doesn't see me that way. Because I'm justified, just as if I had never sinned. When he looks at me, he sees me without sin. He sees me that way because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. He died on the cross of Calvary for me. He took away my sins and rose again victoriously over my sin. How about you? Are you justified? Are you justified? Yes. Yeah, because of what Jesus did for you. Did he do it for you? <laughs> if you know that he did it for you, say, he did it for me. He did it for me. Yeah, you're justified. <clears throat> That's that, that first gift that he has given to you, that first fruits, your salvation. And, and the Holy Spirit has brought that spiritual rebirth. The beginning process of spiritual growth. How I many of you need to grow now that he's brought you into the faith? You still need to grow in that faith. I need to do that. I need to grow in that faith. And Jesus tells us in his word, St. Paul says in Galatians 5, as he teaches the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How I many of you need to grow in those fruit of the faith. <coughs> that spiritual growth. We've got that first part, the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and that salvation, that rebirth. And he continues then to grow in us. The Holy Spirit also helps us to express our Christ-like character in the Christ-like acts that we do in his name. As we serve one another, as we as what we, we were talking about last week and a little bit the week before, those not so random acts of kindness. Jesus speaks in Matthew 25, and he, he mentions those saints who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, visit the sick and the imprisoned, clothe the needy, and befriend the stranger. Next week, we're going to begin a sermon series called The, the Spiritual Edition. <coughs> spiritual Edition. How many of you can add? Basic Edition. Can you do one plus one? One plus one is? Two. All right, you got it. I think you guys are ready for it. I can't wait till next week. I hope you're excited about that for that, too. Because you guys, you got the basic edition right there. Now we're going to do some spiritual edition. It'll be great. Look forward to it. Okay. This week is the opening of soul season. Okay. Do you notice the Fishing shirt I've got here. We're going to do some fishing. I love it. you got some boats out there. It's awesome. i got to tell you real quick about this shirt, though. Um, I was at a funeral home on Friday afternoon, sitting there with my wife and other family members and things that way. And, and this guy that I know as Pastor Bob, and it's not our Pastor Bob, a different Pastor Bob, and you'll understand that immediately once I you know, finish the, the, the shirt story, but... He walks in with this shirt on, so you know it wasn't our Pastor Bob right there, all right? <laughs> we love Pastor Bob. Wonderful. But, and I, I learned it's Bob Tibbetts, right? All right, thank you, brother. He's a retired pastor from the Wesleyan Methodist Church over on Shattuck near Hermansall. And my wife used to worship there at home, man, a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> 25 years is a 
long time, all right? A long time ago, 25 plus years ago. But he walks in, I say, hey, I really like that shirt. I could use that on this Sunday. And I told him a little bit about why, and he said, okay. And before he left, he took his shirt off. He had a t-shirt on, thankfully, believe me. <laughs> and he gave it to me. Now, I've heard it said many a different times, you know, hey, that guy will give you the shirt off his back, but he actually did. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that Christ-like act of love. But soul season, we're opening up, is a year-long emphasis on outreach and evangelism, which simply means sharing your faith. Okay, how many of you can do that? You do that? How many of you will do that? Well, let's not go there yet. I don't want to, you know, don't want to make you lie in church or anything that way, okay? Let's let's start small stuuff. Think back to that first Pentecost with me for a moment. Wouldn't that have been great to be there? That would have been awesome, right? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And and how many people, how many people came to faith? How many people did the Holy Spirit nudge and touch on on that day? How many came to faith that day? 3,000, yeah, some of you, you know what God's word says that, even though we didn't read it here this morning, it's there in Acts 2, you can read it for yourself, 3,000 people, they had about 120 prior to that day, and then Peter got up and he preached, and the Holy Spirit worked in their lives, do you think there were more than 3,000 people in Jerusalem that day? Oh, I think so too, but 3,000 of them heard that message, and the Holy Spirit worked faith in their hearts that day. But what do you think those people did? Do you think they went home and told nobody? Do you think they told somebody? How many of you think that those 3,000 people went and told somebody about this Jesus and what Jesus did, that they were now justified? Do you think so? I think so, too. I think, in fact, I know because God's Word tells us that's how the church grew. And that's still how the church grows. Has the Holy Spirit touched you? Has the Holy Spirit come to you so you know that you are justified? Yes. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to go home and tell no one? Or are you willing to go and tell your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, and the stranger that you're going to meet for the very first time this week? I'm willing to do that. I'm excited to do that. I want to tell other people of what Jesus has done for me that I'm justified, and he's done it for not only me, but for everyone. He's done it for everyone, even my family and my friends, both of them, okay? <laughs> those, those two that are family, you know. Yeah, all of those people we come into contact with, <coughs> Jesus did that for them too. Those disciples and those new believers, they shared their faith with other people. And, and some of those people heard that message and the Holy Spirit worked in their lives and gave the gift of faith. And, and guess what those people did then? They shared it with their family and friends. And then those people believed and, and they realized, hey, I'm justified too. And what do you think those people did with that? They shared it with some other people. And then those people shared it with some other people and they shared it. Wow. Do you, do you realize how many of you had somebody tell you about Jesus? And that's why you're a believer. I bet you every one of us, right? Yeah. Somebody had to tell us, and that somebody was told by somebody, and that somebody, and they go back far enough, and you know what? They heard it from Peter. They heard it from those first disciples. They heard it from those first eyewitnesses. We're a product of that. You see, Jesus, he got these 12 guys together, and he said, I'm going to make you salesmen. Did he do that? He hired the best, best people. That, you know, he went, he went to the used camp sales place, and he said, hey, I need to get your best salesman. Can I? Well, wait a minute. He didn't do it that way, did he? He didn't make salesmen. He made disciples. And then those disciples are apostles, which are sent ones, disciples being followers of Jesus, and apostles are the ones who are sent. Has he sent to you? Yeah, we're sent too, aren't we? Right. Jesus didn't train salespeople to send them out to sell the church. Jesus blessed people one by one, and then they went out as satisfied customers and told someone. 
Are you a satisfied customer? Has Jesus blessed you? Yes. You don't have to sell Jesus. He's not for sale. He's free. As a satisfied customer, tell somebody. Tell somebody. And then tell somebody else. And tell somebody else. Keep telling them. Faith is spread not by salespeople, but satisfied customers. Your friends and your family, they don't want a, a canned, memorized speech about the Bible. They don't want to hear that. How do you knew that already? Yeah. What do they want to hear? They want to hear your experience and how God has touched your heart and how he's changed you and he's made a difference in your life, how he's justified you. And that that same justification is also for them. He's just telling his story in your life. Just let them know. That's what we're about with this soul season being open. As you came in today, did you receive one of these bags with some stuff in it? Anybody not receive this? Is there anybody here that didn't receive this? Oh, yeah. Perfect. I knew we had the best ushers in the world, man. They made sure everybody got this stuff. Would you take that up right now? Because I'm sure you haven't looked at it at all yet because you were busy singing too much already and things that way. You should have received a soul season fishing kit. And inside your fishing kit is a fishing license for the 2014-2015 season. It's valid for, for soul season. Got that? I, I want you to see that there's a, a line there that says, this empowers, and then a blank line. Put your name on that. Whether you do that right now or when you get home today, I want you to write that name of yours on that line. Okay, so that you know it's yours. It empowers you to join Jesus on his mission to be a fisher of men. Okay. Now, I'm not real big on going out in the boat and doing the fishing. I do know that God has great timing. Do you know that in Michigan right now, you can go fishing today, this weekend, without what? Without a license. Wow. What happens if you do that tomorrow, though? You get caught, you get a ticket, you'll be in trouble. Don't get caught. I think it might be the other way. Yeah. Okay. But, but you're supposed to have a license to do this. Well, you have a license now. I don't want you guys out there poaching fish, okay? Yeah, you can poach your eggs, though. It's all right. So you have this. Now, if you're going fishing in a boat next weekend, what would you have with you in the boat? A license. You wouldn't leave that at home? No. You'd take that with you. So what do you think you should do with this fishing license or this soul season fishing license? Yeah, keep it with you. Okay. The DNR probably will not accept this from you if you're in a fishing boat. I just want you guys to be clear with that, okay? Don't say pastor said. But it's a good reminder for whom? Yeah, for us. It's a good reminder for us that, that the soul season is open. Okay. I can do some fishing. All right? Good stuff there. There's also some cards underneath that. Have you seen that? And, and there's a blank line that says member. You can write your name on those cards too. We call that bait. Okay? You got some bait with you when you go fishing that way, and, and you meet somebody, you're talking with them, or and, and you get that opportunity to share about being justified. Hey, let me invite you to worship with us. <coughs> Service times, the place, all the details are right there on the card for you. Okay? Give those um, cards, those those bait to other people. If you need more, we've got more. And we have lots of them for you. Okay. Use these cards and invite people that you know to St. Mark. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers, and that stranger that you're going to meet this week. All right? So pray and ask God to give you the means to share your faith with them. That, that you're already knowing them, you're already talking with them. Give an opportunity, Lord, to our people to do some fishing. Now, you've got a couple other things in there. There's a, a couple of fish. All right. Anybody know what kind of fish this is? This is a bluegill. Yeah? All right. Good. Anybody know what this is? No, this is a fish from the Tumbawasi River. <laughs> yeah. 
something like that. Anyway. Um, write somebody's name on the fish, okay? During the soul season, I will be praying for. You know someone that, that doesn't know Jesus, that doesn't know what Jesus has done for them on the cross? You know someone, maybe they, they experienced the, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit once in their life, but they've left that, and they grew up in the, the church, and then they, they got to confirmation, they made it through that, and they, they mistakenly thought it was graduation, and so they left the church, and, and they haven't had a baby yet to come back to have the baby baptized. <laughs> or maybe they have, and they had the baby baptized, and then they got married, and and they just decided, well, you know what? I'm, I'm too busy for that right now. How many of you know people that, that don't know Jesus? That, that people who aren't experiencing his love in church? Yeah. When you know somebody, you've got that name. God's put that, that person in your life and in your heart. Put that name. And then bring this fish with you to church. And we're going to put them in this, this net over here. Because we want to catch them for Jesus. All right? We're going to pray for these fish every week. And I want you to pray for these fish too. That you're going to be praying for this person, that you get an opportunity to share Jesus' love with them. And I want you to pray for the other fishermen, that they have opportunity to catch fish too. And we're going to, we're going to pray every week. But we're going to do this for a while. This isn't just a one-day event. All pastors got something going on on a, on a Sunday morning, and next week we'll come back and we'll do something different. And this soul season is for how long? A year. A year. And then, then how long after that? Yeah. Yeah. This, this is just a little catchy thing to help you for the year to get it, though. Because some of you are a little small, I've noticed. <laughs> what? I mean, it's taken me... I've been here for 10 years. I've never had Alan join in the front row before. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Brother Al, I love you. Uh, Joy, I'm sorry. I just you're, you're included because of Al. That's all I can say. But we, we're going to fill this net. We're going to pray for them on a weekly basis as we gather for worship. You're going to pray for each other. You're going to pray for these fish. You catch them, you'll clean them. Let's do some fishing. Are you ready for that? In Jesus' holy name. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.